When a brand chooses to make its mark in a country, in this case a mobile phone brand, the story that matters the most is how they made entry into the market, at what level and with what devices. So the story that Real Me is telling is one that I'm definitely curious to hear, especially with the intention to capture not just the entry level market but the mid range as well with a, get this, 90 hertz refresh rate screen on the Realme 6. I know that might not excite many of you, but mobile phone gamers might just have had their day in mid range paradise. From TechWiz, I'm Martin Githenji with the Realme 6 unboxing and first impressions review. Let's take it and go. The environment is new, I know. I'm working on my birthday retreat. I should be here enjoying a nice, relaxed evening away from home and work, but time waits for no man. This must be ready for you guys to decide whether it's a worth buy before the launch. That is the job, right? It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> Realme 6 has just launched in Kenya, having been originally released in early March 2020. The company itself is officially only two years old and they are coming into the Kenyan market hard and fast. The Realme 6 device packs quite the features and has a lot to offer in the mid-range space. The box comes with minimal items, the phone itself, a clear case, user guides, SIM ejector tool, Type-C charging cable, 30 watt power brick, and I say 30 watt power brick with excitement, especially considering the fact that we're moving into an era where some phones are choosing not to ship power adapters in the box on patches. Okay, it, it makes sense, yes, as most people have a lot of chargers already, and it also saves cost of production, ETC, but still, it is change I'm not ready for. Anyway, right off the bat, the Realme 6 features a comet-like design with multiple streaks that run down the back. Our unit comes in comet white with an option of comet blue. The back is carved for easier grip and 100 operations. This design makes the fold feel very premium. You'll want to put a case on the back, however, as the plastic back easily gets scratches and fingerprints. At the front is the 6.5 LCD display with a punch hole selfie camera at the top. You also get 90Hz refresh rate, something that is lacking in mid-range phones in Kenya. More about that later. At the back is a quad camera setup that is comprised of a 64 megapixels f1.8 primary sensor, an 8 megapixels f2.8 wide angle lens with 119 degree field of view, a 2 megapixels f2.4 macro lens, a 2 megapixels 2.4 monochrome and depth sensor, and an LED light. The camera module is surrounded by a metal trim. On the right side is the power button, while on the left is the volume rockers and SIM tray. The power button also functions as a fingerprint sensor. This is the third phone in the 30K space I'm seeing with this feature this year, and I must say, they might have finally nailed the positioning of the fingerprint scanner. I mean, it's not in your way, it's a button that you primarily must touch when turning your phone screen from standby mode. Neat! At the bottom are the headphone jack, Type-C charging port and speaker grill. The screen has a 1080p resolution at an aspect ratio of 2400 by 1800 pixels with 90% screen to body ratio. Not AMOLED, definitely. But these are corners you'll have to expect to make it land on its current price point. Difference with AMOLED is the deeper blacks, but that you'll have to cough up a bit more to get one. The difference is minimal on the other colors though. Decent and vibrant, meaning that you can use the phone well outdoors, be it scrolling on social media, checking email or browsing the web. And by the way, if you've made it this far into the video, a like and subscribe would be awesome. Yeah? Yeah. Smash that subscribe button, okay? <laughs> that 90 hertz screen comes in handy when playing high refresh rate games as they appear smoother and with less graphic lags. But it's worth noting that unless it's something you're actually looking for, you'll not notice the phone has a 90 hertz screen. We had to do tests to confirm that it was not lying to us. Yeah, <laughs> well, you see, most phones come with a 60 hertz refresh rate. So you see, the difference is quite minimal. 
Under the hood is a Helio G92 processor, which is a budget gaming processor from MediaTek. 8 GB of RAM and 128 GB of onboard storage. You can also get it with 4 GB or 6 GB RAM variants. All the internals offer unrivaled performance at this price point, be it multitasking, checking your social media feeds and web browsing. Apps can run smoothly in the background, which is helpful during switching between multiple apps without them refreshing, but it doesn't store them for that long. Gaming on this phone, on the other hand, ah, it's a breeze. From lightweight to heavyweight games such as Asphalt, PUBG, Need for Speed, Temple Run, Android 10 and Realme UI come already baked in. Realme UI packs a lot of customization features which you can play around with. There's no lag or stuttering with this UI. This is Realme's first attempt at their own UI, where they have been previously using Oppo's Color OS, which is at this point that I must add that Oppo is their sister company, which also has another sister company that is Vivo, as well as OnePlus, and as well as I IQ, I IQ, IQ, huh? Okay. Right, all right. Bloatware is definitely evident, but you can disable most of the apps that come preloaded with the phone. In terms of consuming multimedia content, the bottom speaker is loud enough with no distortion, even on loud volume. In terms of optics, you get five cameras to play around with. Modes include portrait, night, expert, HDR, beauty, ultra macro you also get a dedicated 64 megapixels mode regular photos are taken with 64 megapixels resolution for video you can shoot at 4k at 30 fps or 1080 at 60 fps photos taken by the realme 6 come out looking good with the right color saturation details and sharpness the dynamic range on the other hand is a hit or miss especially when taking photos in challenging light conditions Portraits, on the other hand, come out well with decent background separation. You can also switch the level of blur you want your photo to have. Yeah, I love this macro. Yeah? This macro is very good, especially when shooting indoors. Selfies are taken with AI beautification on by default. So if that's not something that you like, you can just quickly turn it off. Nightscape mode comes through when you're taking photos in low light scenarios, but uh, it is not the best. Though what it does is that it puts multiple frames together and thus delivers a better detailed shot. Not the very best, but at least a better detailed night shot. Powering the phone is a 4300 mAh battery that you can charge with a 30 watt fast charger included in the box with the phone. Now this phone can give you a full day of use on full charge and possibly a couple of late night videos before you have to plug it in as you go to sleep. But with the fast charging capability, you can charge it from 0 to 60% in 30 minutes and a full charge in slightly less than an hour. Nice! I like this fast charging. The Realme 6 brings a lot to the table, especially in the mid-range segment. You get a premium design, adequate performance, excellent battery life, decent display and impressive photography. All these features make the Realme 6 a worthy contender in the mid-range smartphone wars and if you're in the market for one, you can consider the Realme 6. Pricing and availability details will be in the description box down below. Till the next one, we done take it, now you go.